Splish, splash, I was taking the bath. There are many ways you can make it your own personal sanctuary. Right, let's hope that's watertight. Go on, you do it. You turn it on. <laughs> the Real DIY Show, Thursday 7.30 on Yorkshire. Game start. You've selected the new non-applicator tampon with silky outer cover and tapered tip from Tampax, designed for maximum comfort. Style. Fashion. Trendy. Style. Fashion. I'll take comfort, thanks. Stilettos. Spikes. Platforms. Stilettos. Spikes. Platforms. Tampax. Non-applicator for maximum comfort. The game never stops. Why should you? Well, there's nothing like a Friday night in. Feet up, reincarnation street on the box, and a tray of cool, creamy Philadelphia piled high on hot toast. <gasps> Utter heaven. <laughs> hello? Oh, hello. No, sorry, not tonight. I'm washing my halo. That Gabriel. Still trying to get my wings off. Philadelphia. A little taste of heaven. Aren't free phone numbers great? Dial one, you know the exact cost. Nothing. If only every call was that easy to cost. Well, with NTL it is, because all national calls cost the same as local calls. Plus, with NTL World, you can get on the internet and surf as much as you like. Absolutely free. Oh, and you get a choice of extra TV channels. Good, eh? Call NTL free now on 0800 052 3210. NTL. Technology. Tamed. That celebrity is sitting at the next table, ready just to talk to you. Springer talks to Tony Curtis and Chris Tarrant, Friday at 10, ITV. Hi, on this morning, Fergie's dad, Major Ronald Ferguson, gives us the truth about her and Andrew's plans to remarry and his very outspoken views on Prince Philip. Also, marital dramas on the soaps. And families at war is the phone-in with our Denise. Our little cherubs stamp their little feet. It's tantrum time and back to soaps. Aunt Rini, Diana Coupland is in live from the square, 10.30. CITV's on the way, but first, news when you need it most. Good afternoon. The headlines and details of what's ahead on the ITV Evening News. Rover workers are celebrating the Phoenix Consortium's success in its bid to buy the car giant from BMW. The deal rescues the company from closure and saves 20,000 jobs. We'll examine the new owner's plans and have reaction from Longbridge. Hundreds of Britons have flown out of Sierra Leone in a mass evacuation from the war-torn West African country. British paratroopers have secured the airport outside the capital, Freetown. Our senior correspondent will have the latest. And the paedophile Ronald Jebson admitted today that he carried out the Babes in the Woods murders 30 years ago. A massive police investigation was launched for the killers of 11-year-old Susan Blatchford and 12-year-old Gary Hanlon. Their bodies were found in Epping Forest 11 weeks after they went missing. More on that and the rest of the day's top stories on the ITV Evening News tonight at 6.30. Good afternoon and welcome to Calendar. An investigation is underway into just how a schoolboy from North Yorkshire died during a school swimming lesson. Ten-year-old Tolly Richardson was with classmates from a school in Harrogate. Samana Hack has this report from the scene. It was just supposed to be a school swimming lesson here at the Hydro in Harrogate, something to look forward to, but it ended in tragedy. Police say 10-year-old Tolly Richardson was swimming normally with his classmates from Bilton Grange Primary School. But then suddenly he was seen floating face down in the water. Staff here and at Harrogate District Hospital tried frantically to revive him, but they couldn't save the boy. At this time it's still unclear as to what happened and what caused the death of the boy who was described by his head teacher as a bright and lively pupil with a very good sense of humour, someone who'll be sadly missed. 
Other news now and new figures out today show that for the sixth year running, our region is the worst in Great Britain for animal cruelty. The RSPCA have now commissioned a research project to find out just why people are so cruel to animals. You may find some of these pictures disturbing. In Bradford today, the RSPCA revealed they'd had nearly 160,000 calls about cruelty in this region, resulting in nearly 650 prosecutions. Blackie here was killed by his owner at Belle Isle in Leeds. The owner of the dog had actually come back home after drinking for about 12 hours, found the dog had messed on the floor, as it would, um, and broke a bottle and ripped its throat out. These toads were lucky. They were rescued unharmed, but others were killed by two youth with a blowtorch at Rotherham in South Yorkshire. Well, I was absolutely horrified. I mean, it... <laughs> Um, it was incredibly distressing that two young children, I mean, at the time of the incident, they were 15 and 17 years old, that they could capture these wild animals and then proceed to torture them in this way. The society now wants to find out why some people, youngsters in particular, are so cruel. We have commissioned um, a group of researchers from Manchester Metropolitan University to help us understand exactly what it is, why it is that young people do cruel things to animals. There are happier outcomes. Tilly the cat, now living in Bawtree, survived being placed in a microwave. And Pudding the Bull Terrier from East Yorkshire survived, although two other dogs at the same house were found dead. Police say that they are increasingly concerned for the welfare of a mother and her young daughter who have not been seen since leaving home yesterday afternoon. 29-year-old Sonia Vega and her baby daughter Sophia left their home in the Starbuck area of Harrogate just after 4.30pm yesterday. It's thought that they could be anywhere in the United Kingdom. Police in Harrogate are urging anyone with information about their whereabouts to contact them. A walker has died after falling off a hillside cliff while rambling in North Yorkshire. 58-year-old Alan Hall fell 20 feet onto rocks while walking with his wife on Buckton Pike in Upper Wharfdale. He was airlifted to hospital but was pronounced dead on arrival. An inquest has this afternoon opened and adjourned, saying that Mr Hall's injuries were consistent with those of a fall. The first of 19 football fans charged following violence at Rotherham United's last match of the season is due in court later today. A series of pitch invasions twice halted the match against Swansea before the championship decider had ended. Swansea fan Terry Coles died after being trampled by a police horse during more serious violence before the game. Campaigners are staging a protest in their fight against the council's policy of charging disabled people for care services and threatening to take them to court for non-payment. Parents and carers of disabled people are manning a stall in Bradford city centre asking people to back their campaign. The council says its charging scheme is one of the fairest in the country based on the ability to pay and that court action to recover debts would only be a last resort. The campaigners say that disabled people shouldn't have to pay for services they badly need. The council has a right to go to court for non-payment of debt. The reason we're angry about this is that we believe that these services should be free and therefore the debt should not be there in the first place. Now we've all heard of the town of Mansfield in North Nottinghamshire, but you probably didn't know there are actually another 26 Mansfields around the world. And this week civic dignitaries from Mansfields in Germany, America, Australia and many more are meeting up in our very own Mansfield for a special millennium celebration. Yesterday Ron and Linda Lowry from Mansfield, Ohio and Kelly Baker and Bruce Kingsbury from Mansfield, Massachusetts arrived and enjoyed a tour of the town. They say our Mansfield is the biggest and the best. I really like it here and, and it, it's funny, the very first time I came over years and years ago I flew through Heathrow and the customs agent of course asked you where you're going and I said well I'm going to Mansfield and he goes oh what do you want to go there for? And I, I, you know, I thought oh gosh what do I want to go there for but there's no other place in England I, I would, you know, th I call this home. Now moving on to sport, and just hours before Sheffield Wednesday's crucial match with Arsenal at Highbury, which could see the Owls relegated, major shareholders at the club are calling for the board of directors to resign. 99% of the shareholders association are supporting a vote of no confidence in directors Howard Cully and Robert Grayson. It was revealed yesterday that Wednesday were the only Premier League club to make a loss on the sale of players last season. The shareholders, well, their verdict is clear. They say the club's in a mess. We've gone down in absolute disgrace and ignominy, and these people are totally responsible for it. We want to make these people accountable, and, and they should, if they have any honour at all, they should have resigned. 
Same as sport, it's a pretty big day for Yorkshire's cricketers. They're playing Surrey in the uh, quarter-finals of the Benson Hedges Cup at Headingley in Surrey. That's how it's standing at the moment. Surrey made 198 for six. Alex Stewart making 97 not out. In reply, Yorkshire are five for one chasing 199 to win. So that's still a, a pretty ticklish issue. We'll have all the very latest on all the major sports stories of the day. And incidentally, we're live at Headingley, so clearly we'll be able to bring you the, all the latest news as that match approaches its climax. Um, we'll have a full report on all those and more on Calendar 5-6. Leslie and me, join us then. Bye. On tonight at half past five, the clothes company with a modern take on fashions from the past. Plus details on our modelling competition. Brett Woodward discovers the delights of French food and Ian visits an eco-friendly housing development. All that at 5.30. The Lonsdale Community Centre in Hull has now reopened after major refurbishment. It caters for a wide variety of community uses, including playgroups and the thriving Art and Drama Club. The centre has computer facilities, a popular cafe with a regular lunch club, and a number of lively dance groups. If you'd like to find out more about what goes on at the centre or how you can help to staff it, call Hull 564 691. Mustn't forget daddy's suit from the cleaners or his special aftershave. Don't want him in a bad mood, do we? Yes, grumpy daddy. Do we get this card for Nana? She'd like this, won't she? What else should we give her? Oh, naughty Nana. Look at the time. And we still need something for dinner. What should we get? Oh, yes, gorgeous mummy. Meadow Hall, always something new. They come from the restructured end here like that. Excuse me. I've got to. I've got to. I've got to get to Greg. Nothing satisfies like a delicious Greg's Big Bite. Freshly made in the shop throughout the day from only £1.15. For great taste and great value, you've got to get to Greg's. Whoa! 